Good morning. I'm Doug Dollamore, and uh, welcome to this news briefing from the uh, 252nd uh, American Chemical Society National Meeting and Exposition in Philadelphia. We're here today with uh, Dr. Vadud uh, Neri from the State University of New York at Oswego, and he will be talking to us about his work uh, determining which houseplants clean the air best. So, Dr. Neri, can you tell us a little bit about this fascinating work? Sure. Uh, thank you, Doc, for the introduction. <coughs> so, let me start with a very uh, general introduction. As we know, uh, we all know, but most of the time we forget about that air is the most consumed material by human. So, each of us breathe over 3,000 gallons of air every day. And also, we can't uh, go without air over three minutes. So it means that air uh, quality is extremely important and we need a clean air to breathe every day. But unfortunately there are lots of air pollution, air pollutants out there including outdoor air and also indoor air. And actually studies show that the concentration of uh, some of these pollutants, volatile organic compounds or VOCs in indoor air is three to five times greater than outdoor air. The reason for that is because VOCs are coming from all the materials that we use in indoor in our houses and offices. For example, paint, uh, carpet, uh, air fr freshener, printers, and so on. To get rid of this, the old-fashioned method would be uh, ventilation or filtration, which is kind of expensive. But we thought maybe we could use an easier and simpler and actually cheaper way to get rid of these VLCs. Uh, when I looked uh, back to the literature, I found a nice report from 1980s uh, reported by NASA, they actually showed that some of the plants can grab the VOCs. So I continued reading until I got the point that I need to try this because I was working on monitoring um, all the pollutants in air, water, and soil samples. That was my research area. So I used the same method, same device that I used to use for other projects to this one and we found out it worked very well. We were able to test five plants to remove uh, VOCs simultaneously, and we were able to find the efficiency and the rate of removal by different plants for different chemicals. All right, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Go from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Um, the first question, just why do plants actually remove these pollutants from the air in nature? And do we know about the mechanism by which they do that? That is a great question. And actually, I spend a lot of time to read the books and papers in biology to understand how these plants uh, are taking those chemicals. And as a matter of fact, it is not completely known, but there are lots of uh, hypotheses most of them are based on photosynthesis. So they uh, think that just like uh, CO2, plants can grab, for example, benzene and convert it to other chemicals, for example, a three carbon uh, products for three, three, uh, three, th C3 plants or four uh, carbon compounds for C4 plants or for CAM plants, it can be like uh, acid. So basically, it goes to the carbon cycle of a plant. And the other thing that I noticed is that it can be uptaken both from the leaves, the aerial part of the plant, and from the root. That's why in our experiment, we to distinguish between these, we covered the base, the soil, and the pot with aluminum foil, and we uh, experiment the aerial part of the plant and then we put whole plant in the same condition to compare these uh, basically uptake from the root and from the 
leaves. I was interested that it mentions benzene. Um, right. Is that actually a common pollutant in yes. the house? Yes, unfortunately, in? yes. Benzene is, uh, is common. We have measured in previous project, we have measured benzene, toluene, uh, xylene, and ethyl benzene in houses. We could find that specifically when you have attached garage, you get benzene a lot in the uh, in your uh, in, in the whole house, specifically the room close to the garage. Oh, is that because of fuel in the garage? Because of fuel yeah. in the garage, paint in the garage, all the chemical storage that you have in the garage. Okay. How effectively do um, plants remove these compounds, these VOCs, compared with, say, you know, filters that y you can buy? Um, uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, there are lots of uh, methods to get rid of these chemicals. But one of the important thing about the uh, plants, if you go to low concentration, you know, we have maximum uh, allowed concentration for each compound. For VOCs, these MCLs are pretty low. It means that we are not allowed to have, for example, benzene in even very trace amount in our air, indoor air. And filtration won't help this, but plants actually can absorb even when you have pretty low concentrations. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, doctor, could you tell us a, a bit about the plants that you studied and uh, why you chose those particular plants to uh, look at? Sure. Uh, when I was choosing uh, the plants, I uh, looked around and I found the most commonly used plant in our area, which is uh, central New York. The, namely, uh, the plants that we, uh, we uh, selected were jade plant, spider plant, bromeliad uh, plant, uh, Caribbean tree uh, cactus, and racina. These are five plants, very common in our area, and I decided to start with these. Okay. Uh, Katie? Yeah, um, let's see, we have some online questions. Christine Sa, Office of Public Affairs, says, uh, do plants get sick from VOCs, and would they need to be replaced every once in a while? That's a great question, and actually my daughter asked this question, she's 11 years old, it isn't that abusing uh, the plants, she said. Um, as a matter of fact, what we did uh, after we put, the, since we, are, we were working with high concentrations to show, you know, we extreme the concentrations to make sure that we, uh, we will be able to see these plants working in high concentration like uh, nail salons. So we use high concentrations. That's why we had to, after 12 hours, we put it, the plant in the greenhouse to refresh. But if we are working with, you know, for a long time in low concentration as we had in a regular room, it won't be a problem for the, for the plant. Okay. And there's another question from Carmen Drawl, freelance, and she also works for Forbes. Can you give some more specifics about which plants performed best for certain applications? Um, she says, goes on to say, we know from the press release that bromeliads were best overall and that Dracenia was the best for acetone overall, at least in the lab conditions. Right. So basically we have a, a list of all the chemicals that can be uptaken by different plants, and I'm going to present it this afternoon. For example, jade plant was very good for toluene. And we have other lists uh, for each plant. We have uh, the percentage of uh, uptaken by each plant for each uh, VLCs exactly. And I will present it this, this afternoon, the exact numbers. So doctor, you would have to have a variety of plants to actually um, pull out the, the VOCs as uh, thoroughly as you would want? That is a great question. Yes, basically based uh. on the results that we have, we saw that uh, s different plants can absorb different VOCs. And since in a regular indoor air we have different type of VOCs, uh, we would recommend that instead of having one plant, five of one plant, we choose one of each to make sure that we uptake all type of VLCs from our air. Okay. 
And I, I'm wondering, uh, again, how many plants would you have to have? Uh, uh, w would one plant um, per room or one group of plants per room be sufficient, or would you have to have multiple plants um, given that uh, the, the, uh, the planet, the, an individual plant can only absorb so many of the, the VOCs in a, in a room? Great. Uh, actually, our next step of our project is going from the model chamber that we had to the real room. In that case, we are going to study to study to find uh, right now we measure the surface area of uh, the leaves of plants and actually we corrected our results based on that because we have plants with different size so we needed to correct that to be able to compare those on the other hand the ratio of the surface area to the volume of the room is very important so what we are going to do is instead of a chamber we're going to use a real room and we're going to use different surface areas different number of plants and we are going to monit monitor the concentrations until we're going to see for each size of a room how many plants we need to uptake a specific uh, VLC. Kath? What actual technique did you use to monitor the concentrations? For monitoring the concentrations, we use gas chromatography mass spectrometry, GCMS. And for sampling, we use a solid phase micro extraction or SPME. And also, um, which two um, VOCs did the bromeliad not take up? Because you said it took six out of eight of the ones you investigated. It, yes, it was dichloromethane and trichloromethane. These two compounds uh, uh, was not taken by almost none of the plants. Oh. We got some 40%, uh, 30% with uh, some of the plants. Most probably I tried to find the reason for that because of the uh, <coughs> halogens that we have here, chlorine, it's a big atom and it cannot go through the, the uh, cycle that I was talking about. Other compounds are basically carbon and hydrogen, hydrocarbons, but this one has chlorine, which is a heavy atom, and most probably, I'm not sure, most probably the, that's why they can't uptake that. Do you think it'd be possible in future to engineer a plant to be able to remove these different pollutants? Because I suppose the ones you've just picked are just common house plants, you know, um, but I'm wondering, presumably there are better plants already that are out there if you knew exactly how it worked and then yes, or maybe we even will could engineer plants too. Probably we will continue using different plants for even different VOCs. So um, we are not sure yet, yes, but there is a possibility that there would be some plants out there that could be able to uptake these chemicals as well. Also, just to ask, question, just to ask why NASA was interested? I yeah. believe based on the report that I, uh, I read in 1980s, they were trying to use those plants in their, in their um, what do you call it, um, space stations. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, are there any other questions? Well, thank you for joining us today. This session will be archived soon at uh, bit.ly slash ACS Live Philadelphia. Um, this was our final press conference from this uh, 252nd uh, American Chemical Society uh, National Meeting and Exposition. It has really gone by fast, and it has been uh, quite interesting, wouldn't you say, Doctor? I'm sorry? It's, it's been quite inter a quite interesting meeting, hasn't it? It, it was uh, quite interesting. And also, I would like to, if, if I have time, I would like to thank um, SUNY Oswego's SCAC grant to support this, um, financially support this um, project. And also, my analytical or forensic chemist colleague, Dr. Hadadi. And last but not least, my graduate and undergraduate students who did the work. Uh, Jeffrey Peterson, Tim Jones, Diana Rispoli, and uh, Danielle Stett. It's always good to recognize the people that are uh, behind the scenes with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.